Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena. I just had to restart my uh, my intro again, because I looked back at the recording and I'd said Magic Jewels for the second time in a row, because apparently I can't get that game out of my head anymore. It's dead. We're over it. We're leaving that one behind. Stop it. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Arena, where we play janky little brews like a black-white paladin combo deck. So... Uh, before we go into the games, uh, I just want to do a quick little bit of admin. I did say on the first video if it got 700 views by the time I released this video, I would do a second deck series which would start tomorrow. And I am looking at the view count on the video right now and it's at 3,000... 3, 3, 3,000 plus. What? What? <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you guys for uh, getting it to that point. I genuinely didn't think it would be that high at this point. I kind of expected about a thousand, like if that. But yeah, I'm just blown away. I know that probably the reason why that deck blew up is because a lot of you guys shared it around and really got it going as well. So to anyone who helped get the video to this point and has boosted the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. I'm actually just... I'm blown away. So, anyway. Um, next week... Maybe next week. Week after, anyway. Um, on June 7th, essentially, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt gets released on Magic Arena, which actually means that I'm going to be able to do a hell of a lot more decks that I had planned and I've been holding off on basically because Kaladesh just makes them ten times better, including a lot of combo stuff as well. So I might ride the combo train for a little while. We'll have to see. Um, depends on whether or not the timer will allow me, because Paladin combo is really good because the Magic Arena timer doesn't um, affect it all that much, but anything to do with like Paradox Engine or Aetherflux Reservoir or anything of that sort might struggle a little bit, so... We'll have to see. I'll be testing out some brews. Speaking of brews as well, I do want to get back on doing the subscriber decks as well. So um, you probably want to be, if you do want to send in subscriber decks uh, to start off with, in the description I have an email address listed there. If you send me your deck list, however you feel like sending me it, via MTG Goldfish, deck stats, whatever you fancy, even just a text a uh, pile of text, that's fine by me. If you want me to play your deck on the channel in the future, then be sure to do that. Um, because Best of 3 is coming along as well, I'm probably not going to consider Best of 1 based decks, or I'll rebuild them for Best of 3 if you give me permission to do so. But either way, I kind of wanted to get back to doing subscriber decks as well, because it was a great way to uh, see what you guys are into and show off some really spicy brews because I can't be behind all of the spicy brews all the time. You know, we've got some spicy subscribers out there who uh, just want to show off their jank and I am all for playing the jank. <laughs> so if you want to send out a deck list anyway, uh, it's completely up to you. Link is in the description. You can also put it in the comments section as well if you feel like it. Any video is completely fine and I'll... Uh, make a mental note of it and keep it around. But without further ado anyway, let's not mess about. Let's get into the games and let's infinite combo some people. Okay, we're in. And we've got one piece of the combo, but we've got two cantrips in the Dust Legion Zealots. Um, we're on the draw as well. I think we can take this. Yeah, let's go for it. Hey, lemon juice. Ooh, two pieces of combo and the hardest one to find at that. I just don't know if I want to play the wand down. I'd rather play it on four, I think. If you play this down too early, it gets eaten by an abrade, and it's very hard to assemble the combo without it, so I think we're going to go like that. We're going to actually play down the Dust Legion Zealot. Make our opponent think that we're just normal vampires. Maybe Magma Sprays or Lightning Strikes it. Cast Out's not too bad. There's a cycle option. We're basically looking for our lifelink card now. I guess our opponent has some removal in hand because they're seriously tanking on the end of my turn. 
about whether or not to destroy this this zealot. Oh, I've seen a few uh, Red Dead players playing through Thrill Death Spirit. It's not the worst in the world. In fact, blocking it is very painful. So there is that. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Zealot again. Keep digging for that specific card right there. So next turn, I play down Paladin with two mana left open for cast down, I guess. Turn after that, Squire's Devotion takes it out of range of removal and then we Sorcerer's Wand and win. I don't want to play it now because it's my only fragile piece, essentially. We're not going to need this cast out either, so I can cycle that. If I do assemble the combo anyway, it's not going to go on long enough for cast out to matter. So we'll take the three. We could double block, but I think there's more value in blocking anything else and using the cast down on the Thrilled Death Spear instead. One for one as opposed to a two for one. Yeah, we'll take three. And he passes. Okay. Very slow depth for our opponent. Maybe these dinosaurs actually, and he's lacking the green. That could be it. Oh my god. Well, we have the backup now. We've got all the backups. That's the problem with running Sorcerer's Wand in your deck. It's actually very useful. Only as a one of. So, we'll play Paladin and hold up and cast down. If he kills it, we've got Forerunner to go get another Paladin. And yeah, we'll swing for two. I think we're safe to do that. Okay. I think, yeah, there's the abrade. Well, we knew that that was coming in for the Sorcerer's Wand, I guess. Alright, well, he slowed us down a bit. We're going to have to fall in the next turn and play a Sorcerer's Wand. Okay, goes to attacks. If he's starting combat now, then this cast down is very useful right now. So let's kill that and stay on 15. Hopefully. Back up Death Spear. Okay. Land is nice. So let's go for Runner. And grab our Famished Paladin. And we'll play two Sorcerer's Wands. Since we have the mana. And I can't be ass bluffing. <laughs> okay. Uh, no attacks. Decent enough trade here with Forerunner and the Death Spear. If he has removal, he'll be holding it. Ouch. Does that mean we win? That could mean that we win. Paladin for two. Three to Squire's Devotion. We don't get to keep any of our uh, one-offs, our one-ones, because of the Forerunner. Which is why it is painful. Needle Tooth Raptor. Ugh. That's really bad. How do we deal with that? So basically, he plays Needletooth Raptor, and he pings off all of my 1-1s, one and then he points the Raptor's Enrage at my Famished Paladin, which is going to kill it. So we can't afford to play our Paladin anymore. Savage? Hmm. So I need what? Three, for five, six, seven, eight mana total in order to do it all in one turn. Which is what is going to have to be required. Unless we get another cast out or removal off the top. So I'm going to equip my zealots since I can't attack with them. I can at least tap one to ping my opponent before it goes down. Okay, Raptor comes down, Enrage triggers, we'll ping in response, take him to 17. 
This is a tough one, actually. You take two, and then he needle tooths our remaining creature. We're at nine. So I think we have to... We have to Squire's Devotion and just hope that he doesn't play a Dinosaur next turn. That's about our only out. So we can't really survive not attacking here. So we've only got four, five, six, two turns that we'd have to survive. I think we have to go for it. As unfortunate as that, as that is. And that's probably game, honestly. Do I, do I play the other wand? It's probably pointless. Yeah, so it's Dino and we lose. Tap land. Have we won? Did, did we just win? If he doesn't play a Dino, my Paladin's probably going to live unless he's got two Lightning Strikes. Because there's no chance in hell I'm blocking. So he needs me to block there. I think we won. What are the odds? Alright. Let's see. He let us untap. That's usually a good sign. Let's do this forever. Wow. I guess he had a handful of green dinos and he was just stuck on mana. That is so unfortunate for our opponent, but unbelievably lucky for us. I will take it. Ten. Nine. I mean, what What are the odds? I, I guess he's probably got a handful of very rare Carnage Tyrants and things like that. I'll, I'll GG out of our opponent, because if he hasn't killed me by now, it's over. You know, like if he's going for that last minute got him kind of thing, where he double lightning strikes my Vanish Paladin when he's at one. I'm already at 20 and I've got one backup Paladin. So, you know, the bamboozle would be pretty funny, I'll be honest, but it's just not going to happen. And he's done. We didn't even get through one of our timeouts, which I think maybe he was hoping would happen. I don't know. Okay, we're in, and we have one of the hardest pieces to find, but the hand is pretty mediocre. I'd probably take it if I had one Swamp for the Dust Legion Zealot, but yeah, we can just do much better than that hand, I think. The Cycles did represent a random card as well, though, but this one's it's a little better. It's two of the three pieces we need. Third, unfortunately, is the hardest one to come by, and we do need lands. So I'm going to keep this and want to land on top. I mean, sure. Going to have to be. Can't really risk bottoming something like that. Pass the turn. Probably cycle is cast out. It depends on which kind of land our opponent plays here. It's the one land that I'm torn on. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to cycle here. I think it's fine to do that. Get my land off the top. Maybe a better land. Well, we get Memorial, and it's probably safe in this matchup to play the Sorcerer's Wand early. So we'll slap that one down. Hope for a land off the top. In fact, land, land, with our opponent showing no removal, is pretty much the ideal thing for us. Not a land. Well, Vamish Paladin, go. I won't be blocking because Moment of Craving will kill it. By this point, the jig is up if he knows what I plan on doing with my Famished Paladin. <laughs> so we'll have to see, won't we? Still land into Squire's Devotion allows us to Sorcerer's Wand the turn after though. Radiant Destiny, taking life to do it. And having a 2-2 which cannot get through. Oh, come on. Come on, Magic Arena. 
Give me the land. Oh my god. Oh, this is... Oh, this is disgusting. No attacks. I can't afford to swing with a famished paladin because I've got no way to untap it again. Not easily, anyway. The life linker off of the Squire's Devotion would do it. Technically. Call to the feast. Our opponent's giving us so many opportunities to win here. And we're whiffing. Whiffing all the time. Alright, Duress. Show me some removal that he's been greedy enough not to hit me with. Like a vicious offering. There you go. Alright, we might as well use our last little bit of mana to play the second sorcerer's wand out, I suppose. No attacks, though. And our opponent's hand is pretty good. Well, I say pretty good. The Queen's Commission is good. Because this is a thing that's happening now. I think we have to do this. We've got the backup one anyway if it all goes wrong. So this unknown card has to be something like a Vicious Offering. Wow. I bet we hit the land now. I bet you. Ten a bet. It's a land off the top now. I'll, uh, I'll take that £10 in a note, please. Okay. So we're taking, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Technically 8, maybe even 6, because we're going to be blocking with the Zealot. He's going to chef at Dunes, actually. Oh, even worse. Even worse. Huh. Well, have to block here. That's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah, okay. That's game over. It's got to be game over. I just can't. I land and we would have won, and now it's throwing them all at me. <laughs> Magic Arena. You mean, mean individual, you. Yeah, hit a land on time. We'd be comboing right now. His 36 life would mean nothing to me. Well, you win some, you lose some. Our opponent actually got Lord, Lord, Lord. And all of the removal he needed. And a crazy amount of vampires. So he had a pretty good start. We got a little unfortunate that our opponent top decked that other vicious offering as well. Because that actually, I think, cost us the game at that point. But there you go. Alright, we're in. Awkward mana, but we have two pieces of our combo. We have ways to dig for the third. I think we can keep this. A little questionable. Untap lands off the top would be nice, because anything would untap my isolated chapel for turn three. And also allow me to play on turn two. Well, we hit the Zealot there. Looks like we're up against vampires of some sort, so this should be safe to play. Only really have to worry about a cast out, and that's probably going to hit my paladin long before it hits the wand, I would imagine. So it's either vampires or it's white weenie. Well, still potentially vampires. Swings for one. What we can do now is we can start playing down Zealots, which are only hurting us for one, but they're going to hurt our opponent for four if he wants to swing in with Advan his Vanguard. And we want to see Paladins and Land Drops, basically. Off of these Zealots. So can we get one of those, please? A Duress. Eh. Yeah, I'll take it. I actually lied. Our opponent can actually hold back this Sky Marcher in order to swing through with a Vanguard. That's my bad. Sometimes forget that this is a card that does things because nobody plays with it. So Maverick Fane's going to start generating Vampire Tokens. We're going to block the Vanguard here for the 4 life that he is inevitably going to pay. Yep. 
Let me trade off a throwaway 1-1. One, one. Vanguard. Now, do we cycle the cast out to potentially get the land that we need? We could just sell it all the same for the same kind of thing. And if it's the plains, we can cycle cast out. If it's a swamp, we can duress. Yeah, I guess so. Let's do that. Missing our land drops does suck, though. And our opponent has got a pretty decent board state going that is only going to steamroll from here on out. Well, there's the paladin. Can we live long enough? So now I want to block for damage, basically. I want to block for damage, which is always going to be on the vanguard anyway, most likely. And I want to make sure to duress his hand to find out if Famish Paladin can come down, if a cast down or a cast out is a thing. And I need to get on top of that. So still land off the top is very nice. So we'll block here, he pays the 4 life, but he's gaining a little bit back now anyway. We are getting very, very dangerously low on life. There's a land, nice. Okay, so we can go Paladin. Should have duress first. Um, that's my bad, although I don't know if anything in double white could have punished us there. It was certainly incorrect not to duress first. To at least find out. I get to know if I can block as well with this famished Paladin. Which is kind of very important information. Cycles are cast out. Okay. I was probably going to take that cast out. So he's got a Maverin Fane and lands. Okay, 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 okay. So the coast is clear. Do we live long enough? He won't swing in with Maverin, I'm guessing. Well, he still can if he doesn't swing in with a Sky Marcher. Ah, uh, awkward. And now he has another one. Hmm. Well, let's see how he swings before I bother doing the math. That's three. That's four. Huh. I'll take four. So, Cartouche. What's better? Cartouche of Ambition to kill a 1 1, the Vanguard, for 3 points effectively. Or is it Squire's Devotion to have one extra 1 1 blocker? I guess it's the Cartouche of Ambition. Effectively removes the damage rather than just absorbing it. But the two blockers could technically be re relevant. So we'll kill the Vanguard. Can't afford to attack, although I would love to. And if we don't die here, then we win. So I've just got to do everything I can not to die. Dust Legion Zealot. Going for the cast out top deck, I guess. Come on. Don't have it. Double Sky Marcher attack. That looks as good as a concession to me, if I've ever seen one. Equip up the Sorcerer's Wand to the Paladin. And go ham. If we untap here, we win. Yay, look at that. That's a sweet victory right there. That was a close one. It really was. Our opponent got off to a great start. Fortunately for us, our opponent didn't have the removal he needed for the Paladin. Cycling away the cast out there, the duress really saved us, I guess. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, we're in. And we're on the draw with technically two pieces of our combo. The Forerunner goes to get our Paladin if we want it. It's not going to be the turn 4 win unless we top deck. Uh, the 
lifelink into the paladin into a land, then it's pretty good. And I mean, we've got the zealot for it, cast down for early removal. I still think we keep this hand. Although it's not ideal. Well, there's the paladin. <laughs> oh boy. Is that what this is going to be? Don't know if we want to keep the sorcerer's wand in hand or not. Well, now we pretty much have to play around a essence sky here, so I'm not going to be playing down the paladin anyway. I'm going to play down the dust legion zealot. Go swamp. Not give away that we're the white variant just yet. Let's it go. Okay. Air Forerunner is a bit meh. There's a countervailing winds. Okay. So we know to play around X based counters, although countervailing winds uh, is one of those that is kind of uh, eventually going to be counter unless you pay infinite. I guess we go Paladin then? Because we can counter and if he can't availing wins, we can pay the one. I'm assuming seal away is his removal now that it's down on the board, so just don't attack him with the Paladin, which we had no intention of doing anyway. You could also have Sensor as well. It's a possibility. It's going to be like Blue-White Approach, would be my guess. So as long as we leave one mana open, it's kind of difficult for our opponent to do much. Other than maybe a negate. We'll see if they negate here. Gotta go for it, right? It resolves. Okay. Go to combat. Not swinging in with that paladin. That would definitely... He's looking at my paladin going, why would you not swing with that? Well, seal away for one. And settle the wreckage for two. Just ain't happening. I'm going to get my Sorcerer's Wand equipped. And I'm going to wait until I have a moment of craving. In order to... Unless he taps out here. You want to tap out? No. Okay. In order to untap in response to the seal away. Touche is not too bad. Since our opponent is holding up mana to take care of our paladin and we're not going to be swinging in with him, we can actually cartouche up one of our little creatures to maybe bait out the removal that he's saving for the paladin. <laughs> he's still looking at it. You can see him hovering over it going, but why? Why you no attack with paladin? I am beyond your Jedi mind tricks, control player. Homeless Rick. Taking out the memorial? Sure. Doesn't really matter what we get here, I guess. Got the double white. Let's get some more black, I guess. Sure. Makes no difference to me. Does our opponent graveyard their card. They do not. That's me worried. Okay. Cartouche of Ambition on the Dust Legion Zealot. Giving it lifelink. And... Oh yeah, we've got a target. But we'll decline. Go to combat. And we'll swing. If he settles, good for him. Here comes the settle. Yep. Fortunately, we don't quite have the mana. Maybe we should have swung first. It's possible. Um... We don't have the mana to actually combo off this turn. Now we do. Now we have plenty, but we can um, play four runners in order to bait out that kind of stuff later. I'm going to go Sorcerer's Wand. Ah, do I want to? That's a tough call, is that one. See, I can play the Sorcerer's Wand down and assemble the combo. I can never use it, though. 
is the thing. Because he's tapped. Because he's got that seal away in hand, or at least he's pretending to, and that's enough to deter me. Mills a land, draws a card. Treasure map. Okay. Luckily for us, we have plenty of counter bait. Cast out. We could cast out his search for us counter. If he counters it, we win. He can't afford not to counter this. Well, he can't afford to counter this, should I say. Counter spell. If you counter, we win. I'd like to think that we've been not brandishing our paladin with a wand for long enough that he might take this bait, thinking we don't have it in hand. And there it is, we win. Good game. And that is how you beat blue-white control. Okay. G. Mother effing G. He's going to be so salty over there. He has to be. Well, we might as well do our wrap-up while I'm murdering our opponent. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the content and you want to see more, then be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon. Share the video if you enjoyed it. All that jazz. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.